In this video, I'm going to discuss how to make a valid election to be treated as an S-Corporation. Now, assuming that you meet the requirements to be an S-Corporation, which I've discussed in a previous video, you're going to make the election by filing Form 2553 with the IRS. And that election is going to remain valid until it's either revoked, for example, if the shareholders later decide they no longer want to have an S-Corporation, or terminated. For example, if you fail to meet the requirements to be an S corporation at some point in the future, okay? So you don't have to file Form 2553 every single tax year. You make the filing, assuming it's a valid S election, you're going to be an S corp until you either uh, do something to get it revoked or you terminate the S corp status. Now, in terms of the timing of filing this election, for the election to apply in the current tax year, you need to file on or before the 15th day of the third month of the current year and you can also file in the year before that okay so let's do an example let's say that thompson corporation so thompson corporation they're a c corp and they are a calendar year taxpayer for them to be an s corporation starting on january 1st 2024 okay they can make the s election anytime in the year before 2023 or in 2024, on or before March 15th, 2024, okay? So again, they starting January 1st, 2024, they all the way up until March 15th, they can make that election. So on February 1st of 2024, even though 2024 has already started, okay, they can make an election uh, as of January 1st, 2024 to be an S corporation. Now, if they wait, so let's say they say, okay, we, we actually file on March 15th and we say, yeah, as of January 1st, 2024, we want to be an S corporation. They need to meet the requirements of being an S corporation for every single day of 2024, okay? Now, in terms of, uh, let's say you have a brand new corporation, okay? So if you say, if we're talking about calendar year taxpayer, and I'm talking about this March 15th deadline, you might say, well, what if you create the, uh, the corporation on September 1st? Okay, if you create a corporation on September 1st, 2024, and it's gonna be a calendar year taxpayer, let's say, you say, well, hey, we've already, we've already passed the March 15th deadline. Does that mean that we can't have an S corporation for the 2024 tax year? Okay, so if you have a newly created corporation, then the two and a half month deadline, okay, that's gonna begin at the earliest of, of these three events, okay? So when, it, when the corporation has shareholders, uh, when it acquires assets, or when it begins doing business. So you look at the earliest of those three things, and that's when the clock begins ticking, okay? So if you form this corporation, so if it has shareholders, acquires assets, and starts doing business, let's say all three of those just happen to be on the same date, uh, September 1st, 2024, then that's when the two and a half month deadline will be clear. So you could basically form the corporation September 1st, 2024, immediately elect S Corp status by filing form 20, uh, 2553, and then for the 2024 tax year, be considered uh, an S Corporation. Okay, so that's an exception if you just started a brand new corporation. Now, let's talk about consent, okay? All shareholders, all of them, 100%, need to agree when you file Form 2553, they need to agree in writing, they need to sign here and say, we're agreeing to have an S Corp, okay? You, so let's say that you have 100 shareholders and you have 99 of them say, we want an S Corp, and one of them says, no, I'm not, I'm not agreeing to this, or the person, you can't get a hold of them, they're trekking in Nepal, or whatever, and you can't get a hold of them to sign this form, or and then you finally get a hold of them and they say, no, nah, I don't like this idea, whatever. It doesn't matter, it's not the majority, it's all. Okay, so all the shareholders have to consent in writing that they, that they and this is this here that I've taken a screenshot of, this is part of Form 2553. So if you look up Form 2553, you'll see this, the shareholders consent statement and the place for them to sign. Okay, now, if you have a, for a current year election, a shareholder that was part of, of the corporation, they were shareholder at any point during the tax year, they also need to consent even if they no longer own shares at the time of the election. So that's that's pretty confusing. Let me back up and show you. Let's go back to our example with Thompson Corporation. Okay, so I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. So let's say that we make an election on March 15th, 2024, for the 2024 tax year to be an S Corp, okay? So we wait all the way till the very end, March, 20, uh, March 15, 2024, to the last possible day to make the election. 
if there was somebody, let's say there was somebody who they own shares during 2024 of this, this corporation, but they sold them on February 18th, 2024. And then now we're making the election on March uh, 15th, 2024. Even though we're making the election here, March 15, 2024, uh, for the 2024 tax year, that person who sold the shares on February 18, 2024, they're no longer a shareholder now when we're making the election, but they still need to consent as well, okay? Because this affects them as well, because we're talking about for the, the 2024 tax year, right? Starting on January 1st, 2024, that's when we want the S-Corp uh, election to begin. So even though we are making the election here and this person is no longer a shareholder at that point in time, right? They were still a shareholder at some point during the 2024 tax year. So they would need to consent in writing as well for this to be a valid S-Corp election.